today I am demoing some more AI video tools, reviewing the pros and cons of each, and asking the question, is this tool actually useful? A special thanks to our sponsor, Invato Elements. You can use my link below to get a seven day free trial to access unlimited video assets for your next project. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. First up is AutoCut. An AutoCut can remove those silences from your video. Now, a few videos back, I reviewed another tool called TimeBolt, which does the same thing. But TimeBolt is its own separate app that can work with many different applications. AutoCut is just a plugin for Premiere Pro. So here I have my clip in my timeline. It's about 25 minutes long and I've already installed AutoCut here. You just need to make sure to connect it to your license. They have a monthly plan, they have a yearly plan, and they also have a lifetime license as well, which I think is great. And you can use my link below to get 20% off any of these plans. So there's two ways that you can use it to remove silences. The first way is AutoCut V2, which allows you to select these parameters here to refine your silences. And then there's also AutoCut AI, where all you do is choose the AI aggressiveness and then select cut at the bottom and AI will do it for you. But I find that I actually have better results with AutoCut V2. So first you can choose the silent size. Point three is usually around the right default and that's why it's set here already, but you can always play around with this. And then remove talk shorter then, this is if there's any like quiet noises in the background or if you're kind of mumbling, that's what the talks are. And then there's configure padding. If this is set to zero before and after, then auto cut will create a cut right at the end of the silences, not giving any buffer room. So this is why the default is 0.2 seconds, which I recommend keeping. All right, so next up is noise level. So this is the actual level of loudness of silence that you want to remove. So generally for most projects, it's between minus 35 decibels and minus 50. Now, if you have a very loud speaker and not a lot of noise, you may want to increase this up. For example, you can bring this over to like, minus 30 and down below, it'll show you a preview of what it looks like. So you can see the green is what is kept and the red is what will be deleted. And then down here, you can choose to delete the silences. So if this is on, then it will remove it from the timeline. Another cool thing that they recently added at the bottom, which is currently in beta, is called auto zoom. Basically what this does is it will zoom in to different clips in your timeline when volume changes happen. So it kind of uses AI to basically predict when there might be a moment to zoom in slightly. And depending on the volume level, it'll increase that zoom amount. So you can increase this amount. And here we can choose percentage of zoomed subclip. So this is the percentage of all of your videos. So most people choose around 25%. It's a little confusing. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how it works. And I'm not sure if I would actually use this because I usually like to custom my zooms in, but you know, why not? You can always go back in and change the scale. Let's see how it does. So let's hit cut and it's starting to cut. So we can grab a cup of tea, have some water and we'll come back. All right, so here are the results. This one actually took a little bit longer because of the zooms that I applied. So it did 414 cuts in 12 minutes and eight seconds. So now we can scrub through the timeline here and see the results. So and select these to upgrade it to a caption. And last, <laughs> I didn't even say anything there and it zoomed in, I just had like a, <laughs> that's funny. So and select these and then go up to graphics and titles and select upgrade caption to graphic. Maybe we can skip that part again. Okay, let's skip that. So when I said, okay, and it was a little bit quieter, it zoomed in on that. It's still in beta, so it's not perfect yet, but I think I would just mainly use it for the silence remover. And it saved us over 10 minutes of length on our video already just using AutoCut. So I could see this saving a lot of time for podcasts, for example. Try it out and let me know what you think of it. I have my affiliate link below that will get you 20% off any plan. Next up is Topaz Labs. Essentially, it will upscale and improve the quality of your images and also now with video. You can see the after and the before image. 
but now there is Topaz Video AI. I actually started using this to upscale my YouTube videos because I shoot everything in 1080p because I like to save space on my drive. And I did that on my most recent video. You can see now it's available in 4K. Here I have loaded up my most recent YouTube video that was in 1080p. Over here, there are some presets. In this case, let's upscale to 4K. And then from out, you'll also see that you can now upscale to 8K as well. In this case, I'm just gonna do 4K. And then you can see as we go down, there's different filters you can apply, motion to blur, stay stabilization, frame interpolation. In this case, it just applies a standard enhancement. So what I'm gonna do is select preview instead of export so we can see the difference. And on the right, you can see it's just a lot sharper. So if we zoom in on my eye, Look at that. So basically when we click export, it'll apply this entire enhancement to my entire video. I'll go back here to input and show you another preview where we have this text. If we select preview, you can see as we zoom in on the left, the 1080p has this jagged edge on the rasterized objects. And here it's just a lot smoother. So if you shoot 1080p, and you wanna save space like me, this is one way that you can use Topaz to just have your final export in 4K and everything else, all your sources in 1080p. But of course you could do this to improve old footage as well. For example, I had this old clip of me performing on the homecoming court. I'll show you guys a funny clip of it first. So this is me coming down in my share outfit. <laughs> they say we're young and we don't know. My hair, what am I doing? So you can see it's very low quality. We don't have a lot of detail here. Let's see how Topaz handles this clip. So we can go ahead and drag it into Topaz. And from presets, we can go back to upscale to 4K and let's go ahead and select preview. Oh my God, that's a horror film right there. You can see that Topaz is trying to create details, but there's not enough information. With images, it does a better job, but with video, it does have a difficult time. If we zoom out, you can see it just adds some more uh, fine tuning and enhancement. I would probably go up here and upscale to 1080p HD and let's see how it does. A little bit better. I would probably export this in 1080p and you know resend this out to my friends to share. It's still the beginning. I mean, this is version 3.1. There's still a lot more improvement that can come ahead. You can see the background, it's better detail in the billboard in the background, but when it comes to faces, there's still a lot more improvement. So in this case, I think 1080p works best because I'm upscaling from such a low resolution. But for my YouTube videos, 1080p to 4K, it works wonders. Topaz Video has a free forever plan that you can download with a watermark, of course, and you can test it out. You can use my affiliate link below to sign up. And the best part is after you test it, if you wanna purchase it, it's not subscription. So you can buy it once and have it forever. All right, up next is this really fun tool where you can type a script and then AI will generate a fake human spokesperson that can read the script for you. But first, let me tell you about Envato Elements. So a few of you have asked me where I get my funny sound effects that I include in my YouTube videos. I get most of them from Envato Elements. Elements has stock video, it has templates, it has music, and tons of graphics and photos, but it also has a huge library of sound effects. So if I need the cowbell effect, I can search cowbell, and here's a cowbell. Perfect. If you need a slap, it has a slap. Audio jungle. There are so many sounds and elements that I know without a doubt I will find what I'm looking for from the elements library. But there's also tons of different templates as well for videos that I use for After Effects, Premiere Pro, as well as Apple Motion, Final Cut, and DaVinci Resolve. You can search by logo stings, for example. You can search by the software if you're searching specifically for Premiere Pro. For example, here's a little After Effects Instagram intro template that you can download and basically replace any of these medias with your own media. I've downloaded the template here and everything is customizable. You can add your footage here and change the colors. For example, if you open up the logo composition, I can replace the Envato logo 
with my own logo. So I can drag my Gao logo on top. I can press S to scale this down and then turn off the visibility of the Envato logo. So now at the end, you can see it's our logo getting animated and all we had to do is drag and drop it in. So the main benefit here of using templates is that it saves you time, right? You can find something that visually looks compelling. It has all the animation there and all you have to do is replace the placeholders with your own media. There's also graphic templates that work the same way. So if you need to create a mock-up of a brochure or a poster, it works the same way. You would download the Photoshop file or the Illustrator file and drag in your own media the same way it works with the video templates. So if you wanna try out some of these elements, you can use my link below to get seven days free and you can download as much as you want for those projects and there's no licensing restrictions. All right, now let's get back into the AI tools. All right, so this one is kind of a silly one. It's called Replicate um, Yo-Yo. And basically it's this script online that's completely free that will allow you to add a video of somebody talking and superimpose it on somebody's face. So here's the example. It's Donald Trump's face and down below it's a Jackie Chan talking and it applies the movement of Jackie Chan to Donald Trump's face. So I'm gonna use my photo here. I'm going to drop in a headshot photo here. And I'm also going to just apply Jackie Chan's movement and choose Vox and submit. And you can see everything that's happening in the background here as it processes. So here's the result. <laughs> Let's actually drop this in Premiere Pro and I'll sync it with the original clip so it can have the audio. <laughs> I like the end. Mm? Mm? It does a pretty good job. I think it's really funny. Again, I would probably just use this for a joke or some sort of parody. But now let's go on to the next level here where an AI can generate a fake human spokesperson and you can type a script that they can speak. The first one is called Deep Brain by AI Studios and I've put a link just down below if you want to try this out. So I created a new project and here you can type out any text. So I wrote, hello, today I'm going to show you how to use this new AI tool called Deep Brain. While it may look like I'm a real human, I'm not. I was created by AI. And so you can write as much as you want up to 3,000 characters here. And you can choose any avatar from this list. So I chose Jonathan. And you can choose a background. So you can actually upload an image. I chose the chroma key green in case I wanted to put anything else behind him inside of Premiere Pro. You can also add different audio and other videos as well. So I just wanna export this to see how it looks. So let's go ahead and export a video. Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to use this new AI tool called Deep Brain. While it may look like I'm a real human, I'm not. I was created by AI. <laughs> I was created by AI. It's kind of creepy, right? But it does look realistic. It just doesn't have any emotion at all. I feel like it's still at the very beginning stage. So here's another one called LAI. And you can start from templates. You can create your own avatar. But what's really cool is you can actually use GPT-3. So you can type in a topic and get a video. So you can basically type in, I want a video about how artificial intelligence is taking over the video industry. And then you can select a template. The templates aren't that great. They kind of look like PowerPoints. So those can be improved, I think. And then just click create video. It generates a script and then it breaks it down into these different slides here. So before you hit render, you can go and choose your format up at the top and then hit render. Let's see the result. AI is being used in many aspects of video production, from pre-production through to post-production. AI can be used to analyze footage and identify objects, faces, and scenes, which can help streamline the editing process. AI can also be used to generate motion graphics, so it is important to ensure that AI is used appropriately and in a responsible manner. So overall, it's kind of like if an encyclopedia could talk. Like that's kind of how it feels, right? It's very much kind of like this awkward person just standing and the lip syncing isn't perfect. I think it definitely has a space in the education tutorial like for customer service videos so they don't have to film somebody in a set and it's a lot faster to get a little video tutorial out as opposed to producing it from 
scratch. There's another one called Movio. We can choose one of these Avatar Pros here at the bottom. Let's try Vera in a jacket. And here you can actually do a face swap. So I uploaded my face and look what happens. It puts my face on her face, which is kind of like that uh, deep fake uh, tool that I showed you in that last video. So here we can just type in our script. All right, let's go ahead and submit. And you can actually, with Movio, you can create your own avatar. I think you need to film yourself in front of a green screen and they will make it for you. I think you do have to pay around $250 for them to generate that. But I think it might make sense if, for example, you work in a larger company and you're making instructional videos and let's say you want to have a particular person on the team speaking the script and you don't want to have to film them all the time, you can have a generated AI of that person and then just type the script and then make a bunch of tutorials about a topic, which is kind of mind blowing. And I hope that they can add some more emotion to it because right now it still feels a little bit stale and lacking of emotion. All right, it's done. Let's see how it looks. Hi, I'm Vera, Premier Gal's digital doppelganger. It may look like I'm a human, but I'm not. I was generated by artificial intelligence. It may not look like I care or have much emotion. I'm working on it. <laughs> I think this one does the best job at kind of evoking kind of the human movement as we're speaking, but the voice is just, it's too high pitched and sounds still very artificial. I put links to all three of these just down below. And there's one more tool that's still kind of in beta that's kind of a bonus that I wanna talk about. And it's called Blanc. I reached out to the team and they said they're still refining their algorithm to perfect the lip movements. But essentially you can upload a video of you talking or whatever video that you have and it will translate that video into a new language and AI will then reanimate the lips to match that new language. So what I've done is I've uploaded a little short snippet of me, you know, doing an intro to one of my videos and I had it translated to Spanish. And let me show you how it looks. En el video de hoy, voy a compartir con ustedes los mejores atajos de teclado que uso que me ayudan a editar más rápido en Premiere Pro. All right, it's Spanish Premiere Gal, I like it. You can still, it's kind of low quality here and you can see there's some pixelation happening over some changes in the lip movement. But again, this is just the very beginning of being able to do some real dubbing and have AI help us so that way the lips actually move to what we're saying. So you can use my code Premiere Gal if you wanna get some extra credits to test this out with your own videos. And I'll definitely give you an update when Blanc releases a new version because I just uploaded one of my YouTube videos and I'm having it uh, lip sync and subtitle as well in French. So I think that there's a lot of possibilities here in the education arena and maybe for streaming platforms as well. So let me know what you think of these tools. Would you use any of them in your upcoming projects? And give this video a thumbs up if you want some more AI video editing tools on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. Bye. Mm -hmm.